the end of the second letter of Paul to the Corinthian could be considered somehow surprising from, by many. Um, the early church in Corinth was, I think, the ultimate dysfunctional community of faith. Uh, to say they, there was a lack of harmony would be a huge understatement. In Corinth, there was faction, personal rivalries, uh, sexual immorality, theological difference. We, we see all of this through the letters. And then we learn that the appearance of what we can call super apostles, a group of people who start to challenge Paul's authority and competency. Um, they, they, better, they, they, they thought they had better connection, better con pedigree. They want to outshine him. And in this context, uh, it would be really understandable that Paul would simply give up. On the Corinthian, after all that, all the problem they gave them, and Paul, from what we can see in this letter, was someone with um, hot temper, <laughs> and he was not always ready to make, uh, you know, to 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 reach out and and to reach deals. No, he was very set in his way, so he could have said, oh, "You know what? I'm done with you, and and see if I care." Okay, I'm done. But that's not what happened. And that's maybe what surprised many people. Paul, at the end of the second letter, um, behaved like somehow a good parent that does not condone everything that is happening in Corinth, but also does not give up on them, because does not give up on this troubled child. So he reached out for one last time. He, he tries a last push by saying, you know, stop playing games, my friend. And he then began his appeal to mutual agreement, to peace. To, he asked the Corinthian to set aside their differences and try to reach some sort of harmony with one another. I know when we hear about this, those words are those words sound so simple, and yet they are very powerful. We are reminded today, as the Corinthians were reminded so long ago, that even in the darkest hour, even when the situation seems to be issueless, there's always hope, there's always possibilities, there's always this chance of transformation in a community, in a group. And as it's always the case, it starts with us. We know we cannot really control others. We might try to do it, but the results are not there. We cannot try to control also the great events of the world. As I'm recording this, there was a series of terrorist attacks in Europe. And me, as a single individual in Canada, cannot control all of this. However, I can start with a process of a self-examination, trying to understand which part I'm playing in a conflict or a global system, not just to feel bad about myself, but try to improve myself. And once again, I'm not saying that anything goes, that everything could be should be allowed. It's just that in some situation, we can still show compassion toward those we disagree. We can do some small act of can kindness. We can reach out. We can try to reconcile our differences. And through all this process, we discover very often that all of this is less about me, myself, and I, and the way I want things to happen. And then opening ourselves to how can we be together? How can we work together? How can we create something together? We all know that we are not living in a perfect world. And it's always going to be tragedies and, and, and division. However, 
we're not condemned to some sort of defeatism. We can have a positive impact in our world, in our neighborhood, at work, in our family, at school, everywhere. We can bring something to the table and say, we might disagree, but I will refrain from escalating the conflict. I might forget, for, not forget necessarily, but forgive what you have said or done. I will maybe try to go beyond my personal interest to see the interests of many. It seems so simple. And maybe it is. Maybe it is that we forget about it in times of conflict, in times of division, in times of confrontation. We need to be reminded of Paul's message at the end of the second letter to the Corinthians. And that's it for today. I remain the lectionary man, Reverend Stéphane Vermette. And until next time, take care of yourself and bye-bye.